Good evening, you're watching Counties in Focus with me, Rachel Lanyango. Uh, in today's topic, we are discussing the situation in schools. The schools have just reopened recently, that's about three weeks ago. We are looking at the current situation in terms of the pandemic that has affected us. How are students relating? How are students being organized in school? We are talking about some of the things that we've been seeing on our televisions, including some of the unruly students who we have been seeing being taken to court. Some have been charged with murder because of murdering their teachers and even their security guards. In today's discussion, I am joined by Anne Muchoki. She's an educationist and a parent. And I'm also joined by Nelly Temoy. She's a doctor and a parent to help us discuss and find the root cause of some of these problems that we are facing and how can we fix them. Welcome. Thank you. Yes. So uh, we were talking just before we started rolling about the situation in primary and secondary schools in terms of um, how are the students maintaining social distance? Are the schools observing the COVID-19 guidelines? Your parents, you're also professionals. And let's start with you. Um, on this one, I'm going to answer as a parent. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a mother of five. That makes me somewhat of an expert, <laughs> to be honest, um, on, at it. Three of my children are in public school. There's no social distancing. <laughs> no, th this is, there's no way I can, I can come here and say, oh, at, no, there's none. Um, in one of my students, my child is in lower primary. They are 15 in their class. Mm -hmm. He's told me they've not been separated. And there is no infrastructure to do the separation. And he comes home often without his mask. So that is my experience. And my experience tells me that social distancing is not really effective in this particular public school. Okay. However, my son is in a private school, mm -hmm. my older son. Oh, social distancing is working there. Their classes have been separated. You have the op option for going online should you have a fever. Mm -hmm. So like today he's at home because he's unwell, but he's still attending class online. So. I guess it depends on which kind of school you're in to answer that question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dr. Harry, talk to us. Thank you for having me. Social distancing means there should be room. There should be bigger space. And if we look at our schools now, we still have the same infrastructure that we had before. And before we didn't have the issue of social distancing. So actually social distancing can't be practiced with the same infrastructure that we had. So if we had to get the uh, social distancing now, then it will mean the government, through the Ministry of Education, should uh, construct more infrastructure, more classrooms, more sp uh, to provide more space for, for, uh, for us to have children to practice the social distancing. Alternatively, if they, we have to do it, then they should erect things like tents, whereby a class that used to accommodate, let us say, uh, 40, right now a bigger tent that can accommodate 40 with social distance can be, can be erected. But the issue I had being said children can learn under trees, that one to me is not favorable mm -hmm. because we have accidents which can occur under the trees. Mm -hmm. A tree can fall off and the child is under a tree. I feel that will be very disastrous to our children. Mm -hmm. So if we still have the same infrastructure that we had before, for now, we can't talk of practicing social distance. At least in public schools? Even in private schools. Mm -hmm. um, Why? Because there are cadres of private. There is the top-notch private schools, the ones that you know, um, in 844, there's Strathmore, there's Brookhouse in AGCSC, and then there's the private schools in the CDF centers, right? Private is just simply not a government-run school. So they are, they are the two extremes. So in the lower cadre schools, it's not happening. Actually, a lot of them closed down, which raises a whole other issue, you realize that, right? Mm -hmm. So social distancing is only working in the upper, what you call the upper class schools, mm -hmm. the, where the more moneyed people, where people can afford high education, like high. Then it's happening, and I'm telling you it is happening. But in a public school and lower cadre schools, uh, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I am, that is true. For the high class, you talk of the high, I've never been to any of the high class private schools. I know of these other private schools that have gone there maybe for health education mm. and all that. If the infrastructure is the same, 
social distancing can be practiced. Number two, we should also know that we are dealing with children. Mm. Children are different and special class of human beings. They are not like us adults. Because if you tell a child now, I, want, I don't want to sit next to the other one, and they have missed each other for almost a year, you think they will uh, abide to that. When the teacher goes out even to take a glass of water, the child is running too. So we need also strict supervision mm -hmm. for that to be maintained. Mm -hmm. Because maybe that strict m m supervision means if the space is there, that strict supervision means increasing the number of um, human resource, that mm -hmm. is teachers, for their supervision. Because children need more supervision than adults. Mm -hmm. But if everything is at status quo, the way we were before, <laughs> then to me, social distancing won't be practical enough. If, we, if, if you say, Nelly, that we are to probably add more teachers to provide our supervisory services and whatnot, then that means we have to also have a budget for paying these teachers. Yes. And during a pandemic, um, everyone has suffered economically. We've had a difficult financial year. Uh, to me, I feel um, education mm -hmm. in our country is the mandate of the government. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they even tell us every day, mm -hmm. we'll offer free education from I don't know where to where. Mm -hmm. you know, you've heard of it also. So to me, when I speak of additional infrastructure, additional human uh, resource or the human uh, force, labor force, I'm looking at the government to provide that for our children. Because we always see children are our future leaders. If we don't mold them, if we don't invest in them, then I don't think we'll get those future leaders mm. we are talking of. Mm. Huh, budget. Mm. So the mandate of government is to produce essential services, you know, maintain law and order health in an ideal world, education, right? Mm. So my question one does, if you cannot provide for us health, what are you there for? Mm. In all honesty, mm. beyond, beyond enriching yourselves. Mm. Second, you've had a whole year to do this. It's not like COVID. This is the year of COVID. 2020 was the year of COVID. Mm -hmm. So where is the planning? We see no planning. Every single expense has actually been brought down to the teachers, uh, to the teachers and to the parents. I have to provide masks for my own children. I have to pay extra um, for sanitation for my children, right? I have to pay extra for transport because not even the buses are socially distanced, are supposed to be. So I, I get angry when people say there's no budget. Why is there no budget? No, honestly, that's a question that needs to be answered. And even when they tell us there is money, where is the implementation aspect? She talked about tents. I simply said, why, did we, why did you just drop um, containers? Mm. They're permanent classes, but they take a week to create. But no, we get mired down in bureaucracy at the expense of our children. We know the scandals that have gone on with the money, honestly. So if you tell me there's no money, it's okay if you don't have money, but you can't have money to steal and not have money to give our children essential services. Mm. Yeah, so the question of budget does not arise. And I know they're talking about giving the schools or oh, 19 billion. That is the normal money that is given per child for free education. That's not actually COVID money. That needs to be said. This is the normal budgetary money that is given. It is not additional money. Yeah. So there's no money. My question is, I've been paying my taxes. Why is there no money? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not an excuse. It's an, it needs an explanation. Okay. And to support on what she has that just yeah. said, mm -hmm. there was a confession that there is how much being stolen per day? Two, Two billion. billion. Two billion. And you want to tell me you can't provide enough infrastructure for our children? That is beyond understanding. As a parent and also as professionals, we have concerns about teachers and parents being exposed. Yes. When your kids go to school and they interact, they're probably not wearing their masks correctly. They're probably not being given soap to wash their hands frequently. They're obviously not social distancing in most schools. Are you concerned and are you worried about it as a parent and as a professional? I'll first defer to the medical mm. <laughs> so she can explain to us mm. the infection for vis-a-vis children and vis-a-vis -vis adults. Mm. Thank you. The infection is there. Oh. And this is not the first infection to oh. be in this country or in the world. Mm. And life should not stop. Life must continue. Yes. 
and there is nothing that you'll solve when you are worried. You have to compose yourself, understand the problem, understand the facts about it. Once you know that, you are set to go. Now about our children going to school. Number one, before even we reopened schools, I think there was supposed to be awareness mm -hmm, to our children, <laughs> to our parents, mm. to our teachers mm -hmm. on the, how the disease spreads and how we can prevent it. And on that issue now, mm. once that one was put, if it was put in, it was said through media and all that, but I don't know if it reached everyone. If the children and the parents plus the teachers understand on how to protect themselves from the infection, worries will go down. We will not be worried. The problem comes when, yes, you've been, been made aware, but still you can't even afford that mask, you know? Because the issue of mask, and we should know that the mask is only one of the aspects mm. in prevention of the spread of COVID. It is not everything. everything. So where you can't keep social distance, you should put on a mask. Where you can have a social distance, you can do with the mask. That's why I think we, we should know properly. And now with our schools, we can't do social distance. We need a mask. And on that mask, we use it from, from a child of five years and below cannot use a mask. Number one, they can't even put it on. So what we require there is the social distance. Mm -hmm. They cannot put it on. In fact, it is uncomfortable to them. You put, they remove. <laughs> a child in play, is we call... P1, play group. P1, P1, P1 and P2, P2. Surely, they are not used to that. You put a mask, they will remove it. So those ones, we don't advocate masks for them. Mm -hmm. But they can use other ways of prevent, preventive techniques, like washing hands where there is, they should use water and soap. And where there is no soap totally, they can sanitize with an alcohol based sanitizer. For children from six years to 12, they, should, they, they, they can use masks depending on certain circumstances. Those with underlying diseases. We have those with the diabetes already. We have those with cancer. They should also go to school. Those ones should use masks but they should also be supervised from 6 to 12. But from 12 and above, those ones are just like adults. They should use masks. They should be taught the, uh, on the ways to use masks and they can put it on. Mm -hmm. Am I, yes, any other question? Am I through or yes. somewhere you want So for me, me now I'll come in from the teacher aspect. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Since COVID began, 36 teachers have died, right? Yes. Um, I think we saw an uptick with the partial opening. Mm. This has always been my argument. Immediately we opened schools, teachers became frontline workers, equal to doctors. I'm sure Dr. Terry will agree that there's a reason why um, student, uh, young children do not go to hospitals. It is not so much for the children, it is for the immune suppressed people there. In other words, children are jam carriers and they have pretty good immunity, right? So the danger is more to the adults, the teachers and the parents, than so much to the children, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I know we are saying we're going to give teachers a vaccine, but again, I'm shuddering at the implementation in this country. I'm just like any other Kenyan. Yani, the government says something, and I'm like, mm. Mm -hmm. you're always like, mm, for real, yeah? yeah? So yes, they are frontline workers. They are going to be given vaccines, true. Mm -hmm. Two questions arise. This is a, a vaccine that's come out pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So that means they're actually taking part in a human trial, one. So what is the effect on that? And then secondly, the implementation of it. But you do need to realize teachers are actually now frontline workers, almost at equal risk as, as now mm. doctors. Mm -hmm. When you're dealing with 50 children who will not put on their masks because they won't put it on the whole day. And they like to hug you and be in close contact to you. Clearly, you're in danger. So there is a need to protect teachers in this mm -hmm. country at this time because not only the human cost it takes a bit of time to actually come up with a teacher you know you have to go to school you know even economically we should be protecting them because getting someone else with their to do what they do takes money mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. just like doctors so the human cost it's economic cost too how many years does it take to become a doctor 
just a normal doctor, six? Uh, four, then internship, around six. Six years, yeah. and they are dying. Yeah. So uh, do we have s other six years, another six years to produce yet the same doctor? Mm -hmm. We don't. Mm -hmm. So it just makes sense to protect these professionals. But it's Kenya. Are we doing that? Mm -hmm. No. Why? Because we operate in a state of anarchy, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor, um, at the same time, we can also bring in the conversation about now disabled students. Mm. Yes. In terms of learning during the pandemic, mm. these are people who like to show affection and compassion, as you've mentioned, and they like to hug. You know, mm -hmm. they're very endearing. So, what happens? There is a challenge, and mm. equally, they should be treated to be a very special class of students. Yeah. Number one, some of them, some of the disabilities don't even allow other protective things like, like masks, like those who use sign language. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are signs that they should even use their lips sometimes. Mm -hmm. Lip reading. So, yeah. For them to be understood or to communicate. Mm -hmm. What should be done? And I think this is my opinion. There should be proper screening in those schools at the entry. Proper screening where the temperatures are taken so that those who have fevers, because now we can't stop them from coming to school. They have to come to school. They have also to learn. So proper screening at the entrance so that we see those with the fevers don't enter in case maybe the fever could be because of other other problems but we can't take chances number two the parents also should know ways of knowing symptoms mm -hmm. such that the ill children should not go to to school let them remain at home to be monitored to be treated once they are well they can be discharged back to school and then uh, there are those who are disabled but they can be instructed yeah. those ones should be counseled should be talked to those who can understand to be told, please, there is this and this, which has been said, even our children know that there is COVID. Even the youngest in PP1 mm. know that there is COVID. In fact, some of us, when we go home, they tell us, mom, watch a COVID, yako. Mm. Yes, Kamulanko. they know there is COVID. But now, understanding what it is, is the problem. Others think it is a big animal that is walking, killing people. Others think it clings on our back when we walk, you know. Mm. So those who can be talked to, let them be instructed on what to do while in school, not to touch their faces. Those who can be instructed not to touch their faces, to wash their hands, mm. not to hug, as Malimo has said, mm. because hugging is one of the most oh. uh, ways that will enhance spread of the, mm. of the disease. Mm. But schooling will continue. Let me be honest with that. We yes. can't say those with disability to stay at home. No. Let us try all we can do. Let the government try as much as possible mm -hmm. to make sure that these people are also accommodated in those budgets that they do to make them continue their learning. Um, when it comes to special children, I'm not even going to talk about the disabled, the special ones. These are the children who have mental challenges, for example. Um, yesterday I was listening to uh, a news article on the autistic unit at City Primary. Yes. They are really having an issue mm -hmm. because you will not, an autistic child will not wear the mask. And if they do, if they decide they're removing it, they're removing it, there's nothing you can do about it. And this has been so much of a challenge. Mm -hmm. They're actually considering closing down the unit. Which in itself raises, you see, if there's ever a place that needs to be socially distanced, mm -hmm. it is a place that has special kids, mm -hmm. like the autistic unit, and it is possible. But then again, in Kenya, we seem to deal with possibilities. I'm going to be very honest with you, Rachel. I'm a very frustrated citizen, honestly. Mm -hmm. And I love Kenya, I love this country, but I'm very frustrated because as an educationist, as a parent, I know what it means. Our primary mandate as adults, honestly, is to perpetuate the species to ensure that our children come after us are able to deal with the society that we've created. How do we do this? By parenting and educating them. Mm. We are basically failing these children at the most fundamental place. Stage. You know, at the most fundamental stage of life. Stage of life. Mm. And 
my frustration is that it's not about COVID. This is an ongoing crisis that now has been highlighted by a natural disaster. We should have been doing better than this, yes. but we are not. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Now, um, Professor Magoha said if you can't afford fees, mm. you take your child to a public school. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and I see you laughing. Um, let's talk about the quality of education. In a public school, and you mentioned, your child told you in their class they are 56 in a public school. But in a private school, the number is less in yes. the classroom. Yes. Let's talk about the quality of education. How does the teacher even ensure that all these kids are actually getting my attention and giving them enough attention? I'm able to uh, identify this one has a challenge in this area and assist them. You are thinking that this one has a challenge. You're able to identify that this one is this one. Let's start from there. <laughs> I mean, think about, think about my child is nine years old eh, and he's an active, he takes up, he's an active boy, very active. Um, and they are 50 something in their class. I actually walked into the class and I looked at that teacher and I was like, you are a hero. <laughs> because you bring them back whole with all their things and occasion they go swimming yeah. and they come home. And I'm not even at the education level yet. Mm -hmm. and, and you actually turn them illit from illiterate to literate yes. in the process. Um, so I think they are heroes. Let's start from there. Mm -hmm. um, well, the reason I laughed when Magofa said that is already, mm -hmm. already mm -hmm. the classes are overwhelmed. Um, Okay, they can take them to public school to learn where. First of all, let's talk about learning under trees. You know, there's been flooding. Yes. Yes? Yes. So when it rains, what happens to the mm. kids <laughs> learning under the trees? Yeah. So, like I said, we say a lot of things in Kenya that are very impractical when you know the situation on the ground. There are very few teachers, there are very few resources, and you're telling, Olympic is very well known for having classes of 80. And then you tell people in Kibera, if you don't have, then go to a public school. They'll all run to Olympic. Mm. Will they be able to accommodate them? Mm. No, they won't. However, if you go to a pu public school, the class private school, a, a good private school, because they say there's upper and lower, um, the classes are 24 in one class, which means the class is already socially distanced, even as a rule. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And they have online options. Um, if you can't go to school, you have a fever, continue class mm. at home in mm. the comfort of your houses. Mm. How are this, this cadre supposed to compete with the public school cadre in the exact same um, evaluation at the end of the year? Mm. This is how the inequality keeps going. The haves keep having it and the have-nots keep not having it. Mm. And this is going to become worse this year, especially with the dropouts. Might as well say go into that, yeah. into the dropouts, mm -hmm. you know, the pregnancies mm -hmm. and the jobs yes. and the young jobs and the children simply not wanting to go back to school mm -hmm. because they don't know being home is fun apparently. Mm -hmm. So uh, this gap is going to become worse and it was so impractical to say that. Honestly, it was very impractical. Mm -hmm. there's, there's no space. It's like you have a house full and you're mm -hmm. told 10 more people must fit in there. Mm -hmm. Rachel. I've heard of this quality of education in public school, quality of education. Private. We should know what is deteriorating this quality of education in these schools. Mm. To be honest, myself, up mm. to the level I've reached, I've never stepped in a private school. I oh. learned in a public school from the word go, mm. where I was going without even shoes. We were even the book was one, but we write everything, mm. but still we made it. What is causing this problem? The problem is not the teachers. Our teachers are qualified. The problem is not our pupils. Our pupils have that urge to go to school. That's why we have the population, mm -hmm. which is good. Our parents want their children to learn. That's why there are many. That is good. Mm -hmm. Our problem is the human resource. Mm -hmm. We need more teachers. Mm -hmm. oh. So the government, through TSC or the TSC through the government, mm -hmm. should provide more teachers to schools. Let our children learn. Okay. We have so many trained teachers who are who have not yet been absorbed, mm -hmm. who are just hanging around. They have not been absorbed in the TSC. Mm -hmm. Let them employ them mm -hmm. and let our children get the quality education. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, let's take a break. We'll be coming back with more of this conversation. Do not go anywhere. Welcome back to Counties in Focus. With me, Rachel Lanyango. We are discussing the situation in schools as it's now since the reopening at a time when the whole world 
is still battling and struggling with a pandemic. And uh, with me here today, I have two guests. That is Anne Muchoke. She's an educationist and a parent. At the same time, I also have Nelly Temoy. She's a doctor and a parent. And just before we went on break, we were about to talk about absenteeism in school. We've seen quite a number of cases where we are having missing girls, missing boys. Many of these boys who have um, engaged decided to now move to border border um, businesses. Some are selling, uh, harvesting and selling mangoes. We have girls who have just gone missing. They're not being seen. We also have teenage pregnancies. So let, let's start uh, with that and um, as a teacher. <laughs> First of all, me as a teacher, I have to say, I'm so glad that the entire world, mm. and now Kenya in particular, has realized how important teachers are in the scheme of raising children. Yes. Um, because I keep saying this, and I'm not saying it, I'll keep saying it. Parents have seriously abdicated on parenting. Eh? It's like they give birth and then give over the kids to teachers to raise, despite us not having a say in the matter. Um, 2020 was a year where students stayed at home. Children stayed at home. Mm. Like a kid said, we returned the children to the original senders. Eh? That's when parents realize the children belong to them. Yeah. And we've seen the chaos that have happened. Children have missed school. Children got pregnant and for some reason it became on teachers. Um, 2020 was a hard day economically. So it makes sense that the students, children got into economic activities. Because even parents lost jobs. That part makes sense. But there's, there has, it, I have to say, there is a certain... Um, aspect that you have the bl to blame parents for. At the end of the day, and I don't know how often I will say this, irrespective of the circumstances, the mandate of your children remains on you as a parent. Mm. Because it was your decision to have this child. Mm. And it is your primary mandate on this earth, honestly, to perpetuate the species. So in as much as government is coming in to look for these children, my question still remains, how are they lost? One. Parents should know where their children are, generally. <laughs> and then secondly, um, if they're running their businesses, does this mean they're living on their own or they're living with their parents and um, helping the family economically and that's why they're missing school? So my first question is to parents. Do you know where your children are and where they're not in school? And then now it becomes a community question. Why are they not in school? Because parents can't afford to bring kids back to school. Schools have closed. A lot of private schools closed down. That meant a lot of children had nowhere else to go. We know hundreds of schools, or at least tens of schools, mm. have been literally flooded away. Right? So absenteeism, and of course we know the pregnancy problem, mm. where massive numbers of young girls got pregnant, which again speaks to a lack of, there, there seems to be a lack of parenting that is going on in this school. I keep asking, do you know where your child is? And a lot of students don't. Do you remember the case in Comarok? Yes. Where six girls disappeared. Mm. And said, people seemed fine with it. And you know, one of the girls came back home during an interview with um, a journalist as the parents were having an interview. And she just walked in and she was asked, Ulikuwa wapi? And she said, I just needed time out. I'm like, she came back with attitude. I'm like, wh why are we going wrong? I, I posed this question. Try to imagine for a minute if these children, if this scenario that is happening right now, pregnancy and kids missing from school and kids were happening when children were in school, the hue and cry that would be there about teachers and how irresponsible they are. When is it that you're holding teachers to a higher standard than parents? How is that even possible? First, yes, there are a lot of school. I think in Kisumu right now, over 7,000 children have not reported back to school, right? And no one knows where they are. Why is it the government that's tracking these children? Honestly, I know that children are community, but the first protection of a child is a parent. And until us as parents, me, her, you in future, <laughs> are parents, the way we are supposed to be, we set the standards. And then teachers and the rest of community and doctors and the watchmen, they take up from us. But we skewed that now. Dr. these kids of nowadays above and beyond their parents to machine up who I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. You know, all this has several factors. Mm -hmm. The environmental factors. 
parenting factor. So it's not just a matter of something coming from the blues that these children are. Like, let's put a scenario, let's leave Nairobi. Mm. Let's go home where I come from, where we have children. Our mothers maybe are selling, say, our mother is selling maybe sugar cane along the road to make, to, to, to earn a living, so to provide for the children. During this period now, it is the children now who came in to assist mm. the mothers to do that job. To some extent, it was like a backup to what they were doing. Others sell even illegal blue mm. to earn a living for their children to eat. Mm. So it is these children were being used even to supply this blue. If it is Changai, it's supplied in small portions to the customers. So sometimes we can't blame what happened to the situation alone, but the surrounding, the environmental factors, the parenting factors that is on the ground. Yes. And on the issue you've said there was pregnancy, you mentioned that mm. during that COVID time. Mm. In fact, I have to thank this government for once, mm. because it is not like our neighboring countries, other neighboring countries where they say, Akuna mama kusomesha, once you are pregnant, no mm -hmm. going back to school. But our government is lenient on that. Yes. You become pregnant, you deliver, you can go back to school. I have to thank them, the government yes. for that, mm. to be honest. I have to thank the government for that. Mm -hmm. Now that it has happened, mm -hmm. we have our children who are missing. Yes. And let us not forget that in our secondary schools elsewhere, we had children who were over 25 in secondary. Mm -hmm. mm. And they came home to stay with their counterparts who are also maybe boys of 28 who are also in secondary elsewhere. Mm. And nature took its course. Mm. They dated and they maybe they, I, I'm not supporting it, but it has happened. Yes. That is what we should do. What can we do there? Mm -hmm. Can both of them b come back to school, yes. finish, mm -hmm. then continue? Mm -hmm. That is just a question I've been asking myself. I can answer that question. Government policy is you cannot expel a child for being pregnant. Mm -hmm. If they have been registered in your school, they go pregnant, they come back to yes. that school. That's nice. That is the government policy, right? It is so, it is so entrenched, they even schools, like girls' schools, where they actually have a maternity option for uniform. Mm. It is at that level. So on the policy level, it's very clear what is supposed to happen. Thank you. Right? Mm. Again, at the implementation level, the like problem. The problem. This is, a <laughs> this is a running theme. That is the problem. I know quite a number of schools who turn away, turn away pregnant girls. Is this both in private and public? Yes. Actually, it is worse in private. You know, public school is actually a government, a government school. school. Therefore, the principals know what they are the supposed policies. to do. Yes. Right? And they are government employees. So if they don't mm. do it, there is an obvious a consequence. Yes? Obvious, but in private schools, they really do turn away pregnant girls, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Despite so, what what happens if this situation as a parent? Now I'm talking to a parent who has a pregnant girl who wants to go back to school. Mm -hmm. You go to the county education, sub county education office, and say my child is in school. They were expelled for being pregnant, mm -hmm. and follow it up because the government policy is that no child should not go to school for simply being pregnant. Yes. Okay. Now the only thing that we should do yes. that should be done. Mm -hmm is to find ways of reducing stigma. Mm. Because those ones who are lost and are be not being known where they are, is because of stigma. They're now imagining, if we say we go back to school, what will people think of us? What will others say about us? Yes. Let's get of ways of reducing stigma among peers mm -hmm. in schools. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about, we have at least 30,000 boys in Samburu County who have dropped out to become Morans. We have a number of boys in Nakuru who have abandoned school for the quarries. Um, at the coast, more than 400 students are yet to resume school. We don't know where they are, what they're doing. We have many pupils in Kisumu, Migori, Homa oh. Bay, Kisi, who are engaging in fishing and uh, Boda Boda. Let's talk about the crackdown for students who are yet to resume school because they are engaging in businesses or because of circumcision and now they've become uh, uh -huh, that 
I've seen you looking very... <laughs> One, you see now, this is an interesting problem. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. We cannot not say they, they, there has been an economic downturn yes. in the world. It's not even a Kenyan problem. It, it actually makes it easier when it's a world problem in some way. This is consolation in the world. Um, therefore, entrepreneurial spirit rose up in some of these children mm -hmm. and they found a way of surviving, mm -hmm. of making money. Mm -hmm. So look, that creates a problem of, is it something we should discourage or encourage, right? Yes. I honestly think within the means of education, they should have a special, like, a special unit that deals with crisis. Um, I'm a teacher, I do value education, I have to say that, but what kind of education? If a child has dropped out to do an economic activity that is essential to ensure that the family keeps living, mm -hmm. then there should be a program that allows them to keep learning, especially in the entrepreneurial side, okay. right? Mm -hmm. Especially if this child is already 18, 19, 20, and he is in class six. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, uh, the, the, the normal education, um, trend will not work. You see, when you say someone is 25 and they're in secondary, there needs to be a special uh, dispensation yeah. for such. So one, why don't we... Who says education has to be... You have to go back to primary school. You can't be educated. You can't be literate. You can't be taught how to be an entrepreneur, basic accounting, finance, and keep fishing. And keep, if you're of age, right? Keep, because some of these children are not... 18 and under, some of them are adults. Mm. Do not let us not make the assumption that because someone is in primary school mm. that they are automatically a minor. Mm. Outside of Nairobi, that is not true. Mm. Right? Mm. So, first, let's consider that. How old are these people who are doing this now? These are people who are still in school, primary and. True, but school. how old are they actually in terms of years? Because mm. if you are 22 and you're in Form 2, mm. and right now you're actually running a Buddha Buddha business, it raises a question. Would the best move to take you back to school or to teach you how to run this Buddha Buddha business? Mm. Right? Mm. That's the first consideration. Mm. Secondly, it's a case to case, county to county thing. A lot of these children got married. They have kids. Childhood marriages happened. Now in that case, yeah, they should be young from those marriages and taken back to school. Mm. But let us not have a blanket um, solution. They are not in school, were registered in school, and they were doing fishing, and they were doing what? Some of them might actually be successful in this business. What is the point of education at the end of the day? Beyond giving you knowledge and the social, is to get you food and money. Mm. These kids, some of them have hacked it properly. Mm -hmm. Let us not condemn all of them, yeah. to be honest. Uh -huh. And on that, mm -hmm. I think the CBC spirit, CBC is the current yes. curriculum, um, is that you are taught if they see you, you are good in this yeah they channel you to that route if they, then it should be applied even better now for those who have gone to business if it is not bad business we have several businesses yes. and um, adults let them be taught on how to do those how to do those businesses in a better way for, for them to benefit them mm -hmm. because now if one has been since march last year uh, came out of school, married in June. We we are we are um, thinking of a scenario. Yes. Married in June, mm -hmm. then they are now maybe almost having their their child. Mm -hmm. That relationship of theirs is theirs is still tight. You know when it is starting, it is good. Mm -hmm. Going even to tell them, uh, it depends on how to you will go to tell them that now pathways. Yes, they will even commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what should be done first, as she said? county to county case there should be counseling all of in the whole country in each county in each ward let it go down to the small units of administration we have counseling where we had like long time ago we had things like barazas where with social distance we can do people are called we can use the village administration the village uh, we have the village, people who run the villages. They call small units. We have people who can talk to them, to the, to the, to the, the, drop, uh, the dropouts, mm. the way we are calling them. Mm. You also hear from them. Don't just talk to them. They, you should also hear what they're saying. Mm. Then analyze from what they're saying, which way can we go. We should agree. Mm. It's not a matter of going there and telling you stop fishing, come to school. You st uh, stop uh, border, staying border. with border, border, come back to school. You leave that wife of yours, 
No, no, no. We have to talk to, to each other, agree on the way forward. And that's the only way we will come out of this problem. I want to say something about the Moran issue. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where culture hits modernity, mm -hmm. right? That is a chief situation, to be honest. That is why chiefs are important at this point, mm -hmm. and village elders. Mm -hmm. I have had that problem personally as a teacher, where um, children from certain ethnic ethnicities, when they hit 16, you see them starting becoming funny, yes. and they want to go home to do the you know, to, see, um, to do the circumcision, and they don't want to come back mm -hmm. because now you are grown, now you can get married, have kids. Mm -hmm. Now this is a cultural problem, and becomes a legal problem. And now that's when the government must come in, especially in the case of girls. Mm. Even the boys, fine. Mm. Because this is what happens in Pokot. We know what is happening in Kabedo right now. Mm. That's what happens. These are the warriors. These are the ones who have the AK 47s and now go into cattle wrestling. Right? So now that becomes a legal problem. And the legal president is take them back to school by force. Go back to the elders. If a child is less than 18, honestly, they should be in school. Right? Especially in a situation where it segues into security. When you say 30,000 in Pokot, I was already distressed from a security ish point of view. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So now it needs to be taken like that, case to case. If you're pregnant, are you working? Are you a Morad? Are you. It, you cannot, it's hard to have a blanket solution, honestly. Mm -hmm. So this is a grassroots problem now. Wow, okay. <laughs> um, during the pandemic, online learning was encouraged mm. a lot. Yes. Is this something that we can actually encourage moving forward, um, online learning versus face-to-face -face learning? I guess that's one for me, eh? Okay, <coughs> online versus face-to-face. -face. The perfect um, storm is what we call blended learning, which means you have face-to-face -face and you also have online sessions. Mm -hmm. um, should it be encouraged? Should, would, could, is irrelevant. This is the way of the future. You know, there are some things that are beyond culture, beyond what you think. Mm. It is a movement that has started mm. and cannot be stopped. Now, I, as a parent and as a teacher, I am, again, monumentally pissed at the government because one of the election promises was what? Laptops, mm. right? Yes. Now, if those laptops have been given mm. and ensured that they were working, education would not have been in crisis three years after the government promised us the laptops. It was three years into the term. So you can't even say, oh, oh so no, you promised us laptops. It was not handed in. If they had been there, teachers would have been trained, would have made sure there was network. Mm. And three of my children would have had laptops to work on. Mm. So online wa learning has to be embraced. COVID is not going anywhere, by the way. It is now a cycle thing, right? We will get the vaccine and at some point it will eliminate it. But in the next five years, it's here to stay. So online classes must work. And I encourage online working because they will even get to the child who cannot go to a class. At least they have a chance at learning. But the perfect combination is face-to-face -face with blended. Now, if we had, for example, a good online presence, you realize going back to school not have been an issue. They could have staggered it. You go, these classes go on Monday. They do online on Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. But our lack of planning and options, again, made this basically a hurricane. Mm. I'm telling you, education right now in Kenya is, we are winging it. Liwe liwalo, kesi badai. That's what's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Chari, what's your take on uh, blended learning, as Anne has mentioned? Uh, I'm it's online, and at the same time, we're also including face-to-face. -face. So if it's Monday, face-to-face, -face, Tuesday, we're doing online. What's your take, you're a parent? Now, mm -hmm. blended learning mm -hmm. online and face to face um, to me as she had said before is also case to case mm -hmm. because the families that actually online oh. will not work so let it be blended or be online oh. completely to those schools like those ones of the higher class uh, private schools mm -hmm. and to they can even go to work. total online learning yes. mm. but let's take a scenario mm. of a child mm -hmm. from Mount Elgo mm. where I come from because I know about that place better yes. mm. where even a phone is owned by maybe one of the parents and it is Mulika Mwizi. yes and that one they have struggled enough to buy, to buy it mm. 
it is even, we know now that one of one phone belonging to our dad is the one that is used to get information when an aunt wants to call, when the teacher wants to call, when, or yes. we use the neighbors. Mm -hmm. Online learning will not work. work. A TV is not something even they no. think of. Mm -hmm. The thank God Mulkamuze has a radio. Mm. You can get some news True. if you know how to operate it. Yes. Of which also electricity has not reached most of those places. And network mm. is so X. charging it again. Thank God to solar which came. Mm. Nowadays I see every home with a solar and something which can charge a phone. Mm. So even the blended one mm. will not work mm. for other families. Let's not even go far. Come here to our slum, uh, slum uh, in, to our slums. Every, every one of us, all of us here know how those people live. Even the electricity itself is the one that has been connected in a funny way. Yeah. There might be a TV, yes, mm -hmm. but those parents don't have time to stay in the house. Mm -hmm. They have to hustle yes. for them to live, to get a living for their children. Mm -hmm. And a young child of like PP1 and PP2 mm -hmm. can't be subjected to online without a parent, parent. being there. Now, you want to tell me this parent will leave everything, sit in the house with the child, with the, if, I, if I'm told the equipments are there for the purpose of the online. Don't, uh, should not go to look for, to do that, uh, sell the skuma they're selling, sell the omena, sell the tomato, the hassle they're doing. Put it aside to come and sit with the child for online. Mm. They will it not. It will not happen. They will not. That one for sure they will not. Mm. Uh, on a quickly, mm -hmm. there are also cadres like mine. Mm -hmm. Even during the COVID, mm -hmm. we were not staying in the house. Mm -hmm. So that online couldn't work, work in my house because I can't live going to serve patients mm -hmm. to sit on the online. Mm -hmm. So to, to me, the best option as per now in this country of Kenya, yes. where we have more poor people yeah. than the rich, mm -hmm. the face to face, mm -hmm. seeing madam it's in class, the way we, we, we used to see her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm will work. Okay. I need mm. to explain something on online though. There's an, there's a, there's an attitude where you think online yes. is at home uh -huh. with the students. Yes. That is not necessarily. That's the attitude we've been given. But imagine a community center that had a TV mm -hmm. and that means a teacher who's teaching at Olympic Primary mm -hmm. could be teaching overflow mm -hmm. in the community center mm -hmm. and having, you see, mm -hmm. so online can work outside of the home because that problem you're saying is not only a high class, for low class. We live in two income families. So for online class to work, one parent has to stay home. Yeah. How is that? For any, 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 any. So I'm a teacher and I couldn't hack it. Mm. If you have five children, why are you getting five devices to teach them from? So it's a problem. It's a problem. And Anne, uh, briefly, just before we close, I have very few minutes left. Let's look at uh, the safety of teachers right now. We've been seeing cases of uh, students attacking the security guards, students attacking their teachers. Many have murdered yes. during this period. In various counties, Kisi, Kakamega, Coast, one was found with a knife. Very briefly, one minute, one minute each for all of you guys to close it up for us. We are stressed mm -hmm. as a country. Mm -hmm. And this has, is reflecting in our children. Yes. Okay, they're frustrated, they're stressed. Being back in school, some of them are supposed to have finished. Um, teachers are stressed. So it's, it's, it's a very volatile situation we are in right now, mm -hmm. to be honest, and it is reflecting. This, in my opinion, is counseling. It's a counseling thing now. Mm -hmm. It's a communication thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because this is, in my opinion, just, it's, it's the crack that is beginning to show. Yeah. And please understand, that there are no adults right now who have the capacity worldwide by the way teachers are stressed mm. it has become a big issue burnout mm. so it is a situation where a child is stressed the adult in charge of them is stressed their parent is stressed mm. and in the midst of it it's the child who has no idea how to cope mm. right mm. so what you're seeing is just a reflection of what's happening mm. these kids have nowhere to turn to mm. no one to talk to mm. other than social media I guess we'll have to close it uh, Sorry, like that. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. And thank you so much for watching Counties in Focus. Let's do this again, same time, same place next week. Right here on Look Up TV. My name is Rachel Nanyango. Have a great evening.